So hormones are chemical messengers and there are different glands around the body that have the job of maintaining the state of homeostasis, which is balance. And those glands do that through the use of secreting hormones. And that balance can change in response to the environment that the body is in. So a really, two really obvious ones. One is the female menstrual cycle. So hormone levels really change and fluctuate throughout a woman's cycle. And it's quite important to really acknowledge that and know that when your body is on its cycle that you need to give it time to rest. There's a wonderful book, I'm just seeing Meg's joined, <laughs> hello my Meg, who's actually going to be talking with us on Wednesday. So Meg introduced me to a book, I'm sure I've got it, yeah, it's called The Woman Code, it's an American book and it is quite American, um, but it's also brilliant and it talks a lot about um, women's cycle and what and how you can, um, what to do in terms of exercise and diet throughout your cycle. There's a few other books that I was told about on my recent pregnancy training as well. So I'll share those in a, a post I do um, later in the week. But there are seven major endocrine glands in the body and they all work together to maintain this state of balance. So I'm gonna jump into a yoga sequence now that's going to look at helping to balance out the endocrine system. The, so the two I was <laughs> talking about was, so the menstrual cycle, the other one, of course, you'll have heard about is the adrenal glands and cortisol. So yoga, we've talked about before, is amazing. And there's a lot of scientific evidence around what yoga can do for lowering, lowering cortisol levels. But what yoga is also really good at doing is helping the adrenal glands to work properly because we do need cortisol in our bodies. It is all about balance, ultimately. Yoga does, can also help at that time of the month, also with endometriosis. So twists are really good at um, cleanse, squeezing out the liver. Um, so getting rid of um, additional or oh, too much estrogen, which is what the build up. That's what happens during endometriosis. There's a build up of estrogen. Anyway, I'm going to jump into a sequence. Um, and you can do this as a sequence or you can pick and choose the movements. So as always, I'm going to start in good old child's pose. Because it's just good for everything. <laughs> and it'll just bring your body into a calm and relaxed state. So one of the really good great advantages of yoga is that it, it turns our body around so it moves against gravity it also twists so it's the twists and the turns it's the gravity it's the flow it's the movement with the breath all these things help with each of the things we've been focused on in the last few weeks and also help with balancing out the endocrine system so you can come into your child's pose i should also say I, was, I often reference restorative yoga. Um, I'm a big fan of restorative yoga. Restorative yoga being anything with props, and that can be cushions, blankets, bean bags, it can be belts, bolsters, blocks, books, whatever you've got to hand. But if you can give your body the opportunity to relax more, it'll take it. And if it gets the more it gets used to being able to go into a place of rest and relaxation, that is a good place where your body can heal and that can encourage and help it back into a place of balance. So I say that because I always whip out the bolster with child's, child's pose because a supported child's pose, as far as I'm concerned, is absolute heaven. So two options, you can come down, bring your bolster or your cushions and bring your cheeks What child's pose also allows you to do is it brings you inwards, it allows you to come into your breath, and abdominal breathing, really important for the endocrine system, also for the lymphatic system. Um, but really breathing into the belly, not, it's not belly breath as such, right? You're not pushing air down into the belly. You're, it's a deep breath, it's a slow inhale, 
and you want the diaphragm to be moving, you can test that by placing your hands on the side of the ribs and the two bottom ribs will lift up and down and then the higher ribs will move out to the sides and you, that should be felt on both sides. So child's pose, you can come into the child's pose with a bolster or child's pose with head extended. You stay here for a few minutes and you come up and come into rabbit. So rabbit and camel are great for our thyroid gland. So camel, you come down, rest the crown of the head on the mat. So it feels quite ailing, so you'll probably want to go like this. But you want to come right under. Let your shoulders relax. And then stay here. I'm obviously moving through this quite quickly, but stay in a pose to give your body a chance to acknowledge that it's there. And then you can come into camel. So there's modified camel, where you can bring your knees out wide. So similar to your child's pose, place your fingers on the mat facing forward and lift up and lift open at the neck. So that's the balance of camel, the constriction and the opening. So you're flooding that area with fresh blood. That opening at the chest. And then the more traditional camel is coming up. So up onto your thighs, placing your hands, bottom, top of the glutes, bottom of the sacrum, elbows in, lifting up and then back. And just that is enough. You can come and reach your hands down onto your ankles, but if you're a real seasoned backbender, but if you're not, you really don't need to. Placing your hands on the base of your spine is absolutely fine. And then we're gonna come into Cobra. So Cobra is great for massaging the adrenal glands. So we can come into plank, lower slowly down to the mat, and then bring your legs out wide. This will help to protect compression in the base of your spine. Bring your forearms out and lift up into your cobra. You don't need to engage your glutes here. You can use the airbag effect of engagement at your core. And then come back and slowly lift yourself up into your forward fold so any forward bends you're constricting your abdominal organs and you're allowing them to be flushed with blood so it's the same principle as um camel and hair this is also coming into your pituitary gland which is one of the most important hormone secretion glands in the body This one's great for mental fog and fatigue as well. So, and then lower yourself down and come into a forward fold. Two options here. You can either come in to a flexed foot version, grab onto your feet or rest your hands down and you're looking for a more extended spine. If you want to look at a more restorative yin version, you can relax the legs grab some cushions round the back and rest the forehead down. Which is another of my faves, as anyone that's been watching me will know. And um, then we're gonna come into bridge, which is wonderful, so it's opening all across the front of the chest. So that covers off a lot of the different endocrine hormonal glands. Um, there's also a few articles that I've been reading recently that are, um, what's the word? They're comparing the positioning of the hormone glands with the chakras, um, which chakras are energy centers, but they positioning wise, they're not far off where the major 
hormone cyst hormone glands are interestingly i'll share a post on that um later in the week so bridge again i'll give you two versions so traditional bridge i did a mini workshop on this a couple of weeks ago so i'm not going to go into this in detail today but tilting the pelvis forward and then back and lifting up going into the legs and you can stay here for a count of 10 and then lower down and then there's also supported bridge which is a restorative version so you can grab a big sofa cushion lie back and then bring your neck off the end and rest that on the mat and open up the arms which is really lovely. I haven't got my feet elevated here, but ideally you would, so you grab like a couple of sofa cushions. So it's just opening into the front of the chest. So it's, it's giving access to and opening up various different hormonal glands positioned in this area. Also the thymus, which is very important for um, immunity. Didn't, get, didn't do that very gracefully, but you can obviously get up a little bit more gracefully than that. And then finally, me all time fave, as we all know. Legs up on a chair. So this is very calming. This works into the adrenal glands and also into your barrow receptors, which affect blood pressure. And you can come and just finish off your sequence like this. Or you can have your legs up a wall as well. Completely up to you. But very, very restful. Lovely for the back as well. And then to finish off, now that we've moved the body, come back into a seated position. And bring your hands to your diaphragm. Close the eyes and just come into a few rounds of abdominal breathing. So by moving around, we've given our respiratory system the space to really feel the expansive breath. And now is a lovely time to finish your little sequence with three, four minutes of abdominal breathing. and then coming and lying down on the mat in Shavasana. Don't, don't ever forget Shavasana. It's an incredibly important part of a yoga practice. It's also incredibly yummy, but it is the part that we think, oh, just won't worry about it because we need, everything starts racing back into our head. But give your body that time. You will never regret it. It'll enable you to become a lot more resilient and enable your body to recover a lot quicker. The abdominal breathing, by placing your hands on your diaphragm, that just allows you to, it anchors mind to body, anchors mind to diaphragm. Because if you're used to breathing up at the top of the chest, your mind's not gonna know, whereas that's just creating a reference point. And there you have it. So that's yoga for hormonal balance, a little sequence for you. Um, Wednesday, we're going to be joined by Meg, <laughs> reflexology house, real treat. So she's like the dream reflexologist. Um, and she's going to be talking about um, reflexology and self techniques that we can do around self care. Um, so she does a lot of work with fertility, with women, with fourth trimester. Um, so she's a real expert also around anxiety, trauma, stress. So yeah, it'll be a really great, great little workshop. But have a lovely day. Thank you for joining me.